Hi guys, Michael here. Hey, I saw a post the other day that was bemoaning the high cost of seeds on some of these hybrid varieties, like these hybrid tomatoes or hybrid cucumbers, or because um, like these hybrid peppers that are like a buck a seed, sometimes even a dollar thirty a seed if you're buying smaller versions of them. So um, one of the things we look at is when we do these things, is we just look at the numbers. And I think if you look at the numbers, you'll easily see that these will pay for themselves. Um, let's let's go to the board here and let's actually just do a quick kind of uh, price comparison on what these um, cost. So you know if you go with a seed, you know the seed's a dollar on this one right here. This is the hybrid, this is your standard and on your standard varieties sometimes your seed is maybe two cents. Let's call it two cents. Um, for some of those cheaper seeds. And so some people really just go off seed price when they're buying things, and I really think that's a mistake. So here's the reason why. So it may cost you, you know, 45 cents um, to grow that transplant. It's gonna cost the same on both types. It's gonna cost exactly the same, so 45 cents. Or oh, if you're gonna do crop care on that tomato until you start harvesting, and even during harvesting, you're gonna have the lowering and leaning, you're gonna have the pruning. Let's say that costs around three bucks. And again, it's going to cost the same on both. All right, and then let's talk about the structure depreciation. So you've got that greenhouse, you need to depreciate that greenhouse. Let's say during the growing season for the 26 weeks, 28 weeks, you're going to have those tomatoes in that greenhouse. That's four bucks per plant. This is a per plant too. And I'm throwing the high numbers here too, giving you some high numbers. And then you're going to cost you about $3 to harvest and pack that fruit and uh, there's that. And the thing is, it's gonna cost you the same per plant too. It may cost you a bit more on this one because there's gonna be a lot more. And uh, so then let's just say, let's kind of draw that up. Let's just say this is our, and there's obviously some expenses we're missing here, but let's just add this up. So we're at, you know, 10, $11, and uh, $11.45. And then over here, we are at 10, 1045, 1047. Not a big difference, about a, well, guess, a buck difference. But I think let's look at the long term and let's look at what the results on this are. So on these hybrids, the reason they cost more is that there's a lot more that goes into them. There's a lot more um, bigger, there's a lot more production, they resist disease better, and they normally, because of all that, yield a lot better. And so for a, a good hybrid, you're easily looking at, let's cross this here, 20 pounds per plant, easily. Now, again, the tomato, tomatoes, genetic capacity of those plants, up to 150 pounds per plant. That's obviously with the ideal conditions that's only got in very high tech greenhouses, but it's there. That's the potential. So for us to ask for 20, even 30 pounds per plant is not much. I've seen 20 consistently across many of the greenhouses we work with. So we're just going to use that number easily right here. But on these, this regular tomato, you'll probably get half that. You'll probably get 10 pounds. And so then let's do, let's say you get $3 a pound per pound on these tomatoes. So that means $60 here. And that means $30 here. Let's subtract the cost of actually growing that. So now we're looking at $48.55. And on this one, we're looking at $19.53. So again, which seed was actually cheaper now? And so that's one of the things that this seed made you a heck of a lot more money compared to the seed which cost you a lot less because the vigor was there. And there's a lot of breeding, there's a lot of work that goes into those hybrids and they'll perform. Now, I'm not saying that you should use those hybrids in every situation. There's a big caveat here. So if you're using, let's say, field production or if you're doing like hoop house production where you really aren't covering the all the variables so you're not heating it consistently to 72 degrees or you're not being able to vent it when you need to to keep those those plants happy the, the yields can go down on those um, hybrids and even so if you look at let's say in Johnny's catalog they have these hybrid 
peppers, which are really expensive. And they say, do not let night temperature fall below X or it'll have issues. So that's one thing to think about. If you know you can't take care of the variables, sometimes it's better to go with some of these more robust in the essence that they have better toler they can tolerate some of these um, variables more. So you may not want to spend the extra money. But you know, the, I first learned this when I was walking into a, a we we're on a farm tour and we walked into a greenhouse and I almost didn't go to the farm tour that day, but we ended up going and because someone said they had some really good tomatoes. So I said, I'll go. So I walked into that greenhouse and there was just perfectly straight rows of these beautiful cherry tomatoes and the trusses were about 30 tomatoes long and just absolutely gorgeous. And it was the Favorita tomato, which is not a super expensive one, but was a lot more expensive than I'd been wanting to spend when I purchased my seeds that spring. And just seeing the, 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 the yield and production off that and him talking about how much money they made off that one tunnel because they had superior genetics in there and that the yield was so much higher made all the difference in our future tomato years and that's where we really started to invest in some of these higher price hybrids and that really paid off because every single truss had the perfect tomatoes they weren't splitting um, they would just they consistently every eight or ten inches up the stem was a new truss fully developed so that's kind of something to think about and uh, then I guess the next question would be is all right so let's say we use a higher price thing what can we do to our high tunnel to make sure there's better quality um, environment in there so what are the simple things to do and that's what I will tell you tomorrow so do make sure to come back tomorrow we're gonna do another live video tomorrow we'll talk about um, with the five characteristics of easy characteristics to go over to build your high tunnel and, uh, and kind of add that that uh, environmental control so that you can um, get the higher production because again we've seen really really good production in, in simple high tunnels with these added features that can make you more successful. So again, like and share this video if it's been helpful and then make sure you pop back tomorrow about the same time, about five-ish Eastern time. We'll go over the next thing and uh, give you those tips. All right, have a great evening.